Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Kulshreshta. It's One Place Sports' honor to be broadcasting this international webinar all across the world. Working out, training hard, of course is required, but it's not enough. Relaxation is absolutely essential. Our experience and expertise to help set up Olympic Studies centers based at the university level in India. A very good evening each and everyone on this international webinar, which is being organized by International Olympic, uh, Indian Olympic Association under the dynamic leadership of Narendra Bhattraji and the chairman of this esteemed committee, Shri Prashant Kushwahaji. In a very short time, they have taken this initiate to organize this international webinar. This webinar is an effort to bring all minds together to work to promote Olympic education, Olympic movement, Olympism to serve humanity in a better way. So where in the era where the whole globe is locked down due to COVID-19 pandemic, had India, the Olympic movement, Olympic education, and Olympism through IOA, as well as Indian Olympic Education Committee, putting their best to bring the nation uh, in oneness, as well as as Rijuji, the sports minister of youth welfare and sports today in his address, has really appreciated the efforts which are being made by this committee, as well as he said that the national education policy, he is going to ensure that in national education policy, sports should not only be considered as a part of co-curricular activity, but it should be the essential part of the education policy. So once the sports is going to be uh, taken as an essential part, I ensure you that the Fit India move can be very well achieved, sports culture can be created, and we can serve the humanity in a better way. So it is my proud privilege to introduce the resource person of this session, uh, Professor Alexis Leris. Friends, Flex. Professor Alexis Leris is the founder and president of Lumpism for Humanity Alliance and holds an academic fellowship at the Conflict Resolution Program, Department of Government at Georgetown University since August 2012. Professor Rares also holds a faculty position at the Scuba International Academy for Sports Studies, TIA Center, the academic arm of Sports for Tomorrow, a Tokyo 2020 Games, which is unfortunately postponed due to pandemic COVID-19. The project Dr. Laris is currently working on a global academic innovation initiative for establishment of a worldwide humanitarian academic ecosystem committed in institutionalization, alumnism for humanity in action, teaching, research, and programming across the globe. So what a beautiful mind we can see of Alexis, who is PhD holder, president, Scuba International Academy of Sports Studies. It is again my proud privilege to highlight certain achievements of Professor Alexis. From my personal experiences, I can ensure that Professor Alexis is a wonderful human heart. He has devoted his whole life to serve the humanity around the globe through his action, through his mind, through his spiritual elements and well-beingness. Dr. Alaris brings a strong academic field research and impact assessment background to emerging field of Olympism and humanity in action. This framework has served as a blueprint for Alaris MA and PhD work with scholarship received from the Olympic Solidarity with and was established through close to 20 years of field-based investigations and investments, uh, teachings and research. As a grantee and principal investigator, he has received 670,000 US dollars 
in functioning from Olympic Solidarity, Olympic International Olympic Association, EU and UNDP, Generations for Peace and Charity, Foundations to Implement Research-Based Cross-Cultural Youth Peace Building Initiatives, and more than 2,000 uh, 2 lakh USD in collaboration projects focusing on peace building. Dr. Leris field research oriented program facilitated effective evidence based programs and structured through a number of youth interventions and stakeholder training models that which emphasize the use of Olympism and peace building and sustainable development, what is known as Olympism in action and his best effort to make each and every citizen around the globe locally active but globally connected to serve the humanity to spread Olympism around the world. So indirectly or directly, he is knocking the door of each and every one, either the lock of the mind, either the lock of the nation, either the lock of the house, the ground, the sports, the administrators, the policy makers, that to open up their hands to promote Olympism, to spread humanity, to al spread Olympic education, Olympic movement, because they are the essential and integrated part of the whole education process. Dr. Leris, core expertise in the integration of originalization, cultural and educational aspects of applied Olympic education and Olympism in the society. He has contributed for the national, regional and international sports development, education, and health agencies, civil societies, organizations, ministers and ministries and universities in Greece, Cyprus, Africa, Monaco, and USA, Asia, Latin America, Japan, and Caribbean. Dr. Leris has more than 30 years of experience in developing and implementing integrated research, teaching, student engagement, and getting academic program youth and professional sports programming and in conducting monitoring and evaluate, evaluation of the humanitarians, peace building and development of programs and initiatives across the countries. Dr. Alexis is the founder and president of Olympic for Humanity Alliance and holds an academic fellowship at the Conflict Resolution Program Department of Government of Georgetown University since 2012. So I would like to now hand over to Laris, and I ensure you that he is going to empower us about, uh, he has chosen the topic which is very close to our heart, that is humanity restoration, games and champions of change in the 21st century. Over to you, Alexis. Well, I, I'm humbled and I don't know what to say with all this introduction and uh, uh, I would like to say a big thank you for uh, Namaste, uh, Konnichiwa, Kalispera. Uh, and uh, yeah, uh, first of all, I'd like to say a big thank you. I'm very grateful for having uh, this opportunity to digitally connect uh, with you. I consider you and our friends, uh, the Maliks and uh, everybody in India and in Chandigarh, a big family and it's very nice to uh, reconnect. I would like also like to say a big thank you to uh, 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 the organizing committee for the great initiative, and uh, I would like to ensure them uh, that um, uh, we will be next to you uh, in any way we can to support your vision. And the vision is how we use this Olympic idea, or what we call the Olympic La La Land, uh, become reality. And in order to achieve that, uh, obviously, with the challenges that we face around us, um, then uh, we have to uh, try to do something differently. And um, and this is what we're going to be talking about today. Um, um, the structure of this uh, discussion, I don't want to have a lecture. I'd like to have discussion. I'd like to put some slides with some pictures and some foundations uh, for food for thought. Uh, but at the same time, uh, since I'm currently in Japan, we are part of a Tokyo uh, Games uh, Legacy Program, TIAS. Um, and uh, the vision of our program is to invest in the human resources of tomorrow. And the human resources of tomorrow are the students of today 
and those who are uh, part of this program in India, uh, our vision uh, and uh, what we're trying to do over the next uh, three and a half hours that we have available for today's session will be to, um, no, it's only 20 minutes, okay. Uh, it will be to engage our students, uh, students that have graduated from our program and that are current, that are from India and that are currently in India to get your in, their input on how we can help them and you all together to infuse the Olympic idea in society. Um, yeah, so I will uh, start with uh, a short presentation. So what we're trying to do today is uh, we're going to have a, a we're going to try to have a journey over time and see how we can put different uh, different pieces together uh, to see what is the essence of the presentation today and the topic of our discussion is is Olympics and Olympic education to meet the challenges of the 21st century. As we speak, uh, humanity and our generation is facing one of the biggest crises, global crisis uh, of the pandemic. So we uh, definitely we are called to find new ways uh, and new solutions uh, to uh, our way forward. Um, but as we uh, have this journey, I think I'd like to start with uh, our connection. And this uh, journey is not just one presentation or one uh, uh, one um, kind of um, uh, conference that we're trying to put together. I think one of the basic uh, foundations of Olympic. Uh, uh, values is uh, is to invest in uh, relationships and and in and in the in the human capital. And uh, I'd like to go back into the last time that we met, which was uh, and go start going backwards. Um, so basically, this is Dr. Malik at the wonderful, amazing conference that, that we organized together two years ago, uh, and uh, it was a great pleasure and honor to to be hosted and trying to support and work together towards this shared vision. And during this uh, three-day uh, conference that we've organized, uh, you've organized uh, in Chandigarh at your university, uh, the Shabbat University, uh, I had a three-day uh, framework called aiming to see how we break down the different elements of the Olympic idea and make that relevant with development, with arts, with culture, with music, with peace building and, the, and, and, and outcomes that empower the local community and address the local challenges. Uh, of course, uh, this is not uh, without uh, one man show, it's a, a whole family and support team behind. And I'd like to extend my, um, my regards and uh, my gratitude to the administration, but also doc Dr. Malik as well, for, um, uh, for the friendship, but also for the support towards the shared vision. Uh, that a vision that started in, back in 2013 uh, and uh, a vision that will not end in 2020. These are just uh, pictures from the conference. And the main idea of this conference, which is similar to the topic of, our, of today's um, uh, um, interaction, is how we make uh, the Olympic education relevant uh, uh, to meet the challenges of the 21st century. And in order to achieve that, we have to create conferences, programs, interventions, programs for high school students, for programs for young people, for old people, uh, for the whole community to start reconceptualizing what the Olympic idea is and how this might be relevant, relevant in today's world. And these are just some pictures from uh, uh, the workshops. I think we had close to 1,000 participants uh, across uh, India. And these are just some pictures from colleagues that have visited and supported this um, uh, this effort that came from uh, India and Japan. Uh, and a dear friend who's no longer with us, but keeps, uh, he's always with us and will always be with us um, in his spirit. And, uh, and his character and the legacy that he leaves behind, which is his students and his writings. Uh, I would like to uh, uh, um, uh, go to, the, to this slide and emphasize that uh, this is one of the students that will be joining us later today. Um, Giros and say the previous slide and Aman. Uh, Aman is the last student that uh, uh, Giros and say mentor uh, during the program that we have uh, here in Japan at TS. Uh, and uh, we'll be joining us later on to see how we can uh, reflect on 
not just the Greek or the Cypriot or the Japanese version of the Olympic idea, but how this might be translated in the Indian context. Um, one last slide that to make the, the whole cycle, close the cycle uh, of uh, how the one connects with the other and it's a long-term commitment and friendship that needs to be embraced and, and, and cultivated throughout years. Uh, this relationship started back in ancient Olympia and this is why we believe that connecting Olympic idea with the roots, with the origin, with the sources of inspiration and the heritage that goes back into ancient Hellenic civilization, Olympia, Athens, Delphi, and the cities and the heritage that actually embrace uh, human innovation and progress. I think once you start connecting and building friendships at the roots of the end of where the Olympic idea was, uh, was created, uh, you create something very dynamic uh, and very powerful that uh, lasts uh, for uh, years and years. Um, so back into uh, 2020, um, I would like to, as you all know, uh, the Olympic Games were postponed. Uh, and uh, I would like to give some background information that the Olympic Games in Tokyo were, uh, were given to Tokyo because uh, part of the successful bid for hosting the Tokyo Games where not just because Tokyo is an amazing country, it has amazing heritage, culture, infrastructure, technology, innovation. The main idea of why the decision was made, uh, which gave the competitive advantage for the Olympic uh, Committee to give the Olympic Tokyo Games in Japan, was a uh, few, um, few years, two years late after the big uh, earthquake, and the tsunami, which was an amazing disaster um, uh, that uh, even today, uh, seven years after, no, 10 years after the disaster, uh, there are many people that still uh, live in temporary housing and still uh, work uh, uh, to see how they can recover. Uh, but what's very unique and part of the bid, uh, bidding process was that uh, we need as uh, Japan, the Olympic Games, because through the Olympic Games, we will be able to restore and recover uh, humanity, recover communities. And with this revival and restoration of the essence of the Olympic idea, which is not just about the games, but it's about communities and resilient communities uh, and how we recover from man-made man -made and natural disasters would be a great message to the world. And uh, this was not just um, uh, concentrated in the Japanese context, but actually um, Japan had a very strong commitment to expand uh, the impact and the outreach of the Olympic idea and the momentum of the Olympic Games uh, to address local challenges. And the challenges we face to today are not just about the Games, it's not just about earthquakes. earthquake. We are faced with the, one of the biggest humanitarian crises in refugees. We also talk about a big crisis with uh, um, integrity of sport, hooliganism, doping. So these are challenges that cannot be addressed just with one program, one initiative. It takes uh, a lot of effort and many agencies to come together to see how they can find creative solutions to address these challenges. So for that purpose, uh, once uh, Tokyo was awarded the Games, um, um, Sport for Tomorrow was created, which is a consortium of many agencies um, from Japan. And the main vision is to see how we move from, from the idea, from the ideal of what we promised into action, into praxis. And uh, for that purpose, uh, the vision will, and the structure of, of, of this, uh, of this uh, consortium was to create three different arms. The one is to create a structure that will promote uh, programs, initiatives that would tackle and find um, um, solutions to the big problem that uh, of, of doping in sport. Uh, the other was to promote outside sport cooperation in, in and through sport cooperation, international development. And uh, for that purpose, create an academy uh, uh, to an academic arm uh, where they can advance, we can advance the Olympic idea and provide a master's, a graduate program of Olympic studies where we will try to teach and train the leaders of tomorrow. 
Um, so, which is where I speak right now. This is uh, space and infrastructure that was built for uh, the Tokyo Games, uh, the Tsukuba International, uh, um, uh, uh, Tsukuba uh, International Academy of Sport. And um, this is this was the initial structure and the vision of of Tokyo's contribution to the world. Uh, up to reality, uh, if we go back into um, March uh, 12, 2020, 12th of March of 2020, is was uh, the lightning ceremony for the games, and the first day that uh, um, the uh, we. The, it was announced that we had a global pandemic. So um, uh, at the same time where the flame, the Olympic flame was uh, was uh, was up and running, uh, the same day everything was uh, gradually shutting down uh, and uh, we come back to uh, the postponement of the modern Olympic Games, the 2020 Olympic Games, and um, that uh, will still, uh, hopefully everybody, everybody will be sound and safe and recover for the big crisis and, and see how we can uh, um, uh, have a, a wonderful Olympic Games in 2021, uh, but continue the vision which expands and goes beyond uh, um, athletic competition, but actually address challenges for humanity. I have a short video. I hope we will be able to see it. Very short video. Can you see it? When Tokyo was chosen to host the Olympic and Paralympic Games in 2020, we made a promise to share the value of sport throughout the world. Sport is a very powerful tool for human beings. It's a very powerful tool for changing the lives of people. Sport for Tomorrow, for the seven years starting in 2014, we have delivered the value of sport to more than 10 million people in over 200 countries and regions by conducting over 5,500 programs focusing on the developing countries and regions. Please sport, in judo, I play in show. For I really think sport can bring people together. My vision uh, is to bring back the, the respect and the unity that sport combines within sport. The value of sport, which Sport for Tomorrow has provided, will be passed on to different countries, regions and communities around the world in many different ways. All for a better future. So this captures, um, that's a short version of uh, Sport for Tomorrow's work. And uh, uh, there's uh, more information on their websites for, for tomorrow, uh, longer version of videos and resources, reports, and many resources that might be useful uh, to anybody who might be interested to explore opportunities for collaboration with Sport for Tomorrow and beyond. Um, but as we move uh, to the next slide, I think the reality, I uh, hope we'll be able to move to the next slide. Okay. Um, the challenges in, in 2020 and after 2020 uh, will not go away. Whether we have the Olympic Games in 20, in 21, in 22, or after 20, uh, after the Games in Tokyo, um, these challenges are very current. And uh, I think it, uh, it's our responsibility uh, to see how uh, we reconceptualize uh, the, what we all call about the power of sport, all the Olympic Games, how we reconceptualize uh, the actual impact of the Olympic idea in societies, not just by belief, not just by uh, uh, by dogma, but actually by evidence. What we truly learn in uh, in the global pandemic world of uh, 2020 is that uh, our days and the solutions that we need uh, in today's uh, challenges is not just dogmas or just beliefs or just perceptions. We need evidence. We need science to inform our decisions and education and science should guide our way forward. Definitely, we cannot continue the way we've been going on and on and on and on uh, the last uh, years. And we definitely need to reconceptualize and start doing things differently. So when we have the main topic of, of the challenges of the Olympics, 
for Olympic education in the 21st century, my perception, my understanding uh, through my experience over the last 30 years uh, from the field, but also through academic teaching of Olympics, Olympic education and development and peace building in, in regions of conflict and in communities in need, definitely what we need to address to gain more credibility and with more credibility and with more science, we'll be able to advance and leverage the actual impact of the Olympian heritage in societies. One of the challenges is the Olympic divide that exists between the La La Land and reality. How we move from ideas into actions, how we move beyond what we call, okay, we learn the values, internalize the values, but how we create structures, processes, and systems that are infused in everyday life and across the world. So the actual impact, in my belief, is not fully optimized because of, of this um, divide. And part of the problem is because that we lost the meaning of the Olympic idea and the meaning and the, it was lost in time and translation. And uh, many times the word Olympus, if we go back into the origins, okay, let's go back to the charter or Olympic charter, or I'm sure I've attended some of the presentations before. There's a very clear definition of what Olympus is. But the thing is that how we comprehend, how we transfer that, not just from idea, uh, but actually in programs that uh, will benefit our local community. And the main idea is not to use the word Olympic or not to use um, uh, the actual Olympia or Delphi or Athens or any Hellenic. The main idea, how you conceptualize and understand the elements and the components that are integrated in this heritage and make that relevant to the local context. Part of the problem, and that was also addressed with uh, our friend and colleague, uh, Dr. Arnaud Richard from the previous um, presentation, uh, we need to acknowledge uh, Pierre de Coubertin's uh, contribution. But I think it's very important and it's our duty as academia because as academics, we have to have a critical lens about where does Olympic heritage or Olympic history begin? Is there continuation? Are there other people that have contributed to sustain and, and to revive the, this idea, this civilization that goes beyond one person? My belief, uh, we need to reconceptualize and regroup and put all pieces together and give credit to those who actually who have contributed before and after Coubertin. The adaptation of these challenges to, to our uh, world, I think it's very important not to, to yeah, it's very important to move to the classroom and you know, draw, it, uh, draw the cycles, the rings, uh, talk about the La La Land and everything and the values, but it's very important to see how we go out into uh, communities in need. I heard before uh, Dr. Phyllis, he mentioned, yes, let's go in Korea. Let's see how we help Pakistan. Let's go to India. Let's go with the problem is and transform communities. Instead of preaching ideas, let's use this framework into changing communities. It cannot happen overnight. It, re it requires a long-term commitment, a lot of energy, academia uh, to be involved, training, programming, and different bodies of knowledge that need to be introduced. Traditionally, most of the sport programs up to date, uh, up to date uh, is, uh, are not so um, um, uh, familiar with bodies of knowledge of human development and conflict resolution and sustainable development. Recently, uh, there's been connection with sport for development and all this is a nice and sexy and attractive topic. Many people engage into theorizing and practicing Olympic sport for development or Olympic values. But I think in order to optimize the actual impact of this, um, of this Olympian heritage and the power of sport, we need to infuse theory, science and practice in our everyday life. The last problem that I just skipped, as you can see, is that there's no continuation. There's a big promise. Okay, London, we said we're going to do this. But after 2012, where is London? Rio promised X, Y, and Z, but after Rio is gone. Where is the, What are the things that they have promised to get the Olympic Games? So I think we have to have critical lens and uh, not to um, be negative, definitely the most, the, the stronger asset, the biggest uh, asset that we have, the number one principle of Olympic education is about 
critical thinking, dialogue, and democracy. So advancing the academic critical aspect of the impact of the limbic idea in society is our duty to preserve this heritage to the next generations. So I don't want to be too heavy. I want to put the problem in uh, three uh, pictures. I think uh, we have to go back into the origins of Olympia, Olympian heritage, and the words that have lost their meaning over time and try to build the bridge between the La La Land and reality. How we do that? Definitely we go back into the Olympic Charter. It's very clearly defined. I'm sure that at least three, four other colleagues mentioned that before. I'm not going to go through that. Uh, there's a reference and a clear definition about what that is. So my work, uh, my academic journey started in early 2000. And the first thing I started doing is try to conceptualize and operationalize this in how we get these concepts of Olympics. We talk about sport, education, and culture. We talk about impact and peace building and development. We think about design and delivery programs, and we need to be able to have evidence how to design and deliver. So in order to do that, we need to start providing bodies of knowledge and evidence on how we can have two things. How can we have positive impact on a number of human development and peace building indicators with evidence, not just by belief. And at the same time, uh, make sure that we identify all the characteristics and the components and the elements that lead to those positive outcomes. I've been using the term of using Olympus as social medicine that will be able to do diagnostic first, write the prescription, but actually by evidence measure the actual impact of the patient and the problem and drive your decisions based on evidence. So on a number of what I've been trying to do, that was part of my PhD, and this is what I've been doing the last close to 20 years. I tried to identify those elements and the components like a prescription on how we can ensure positive impact in communities in need, on a number of indicators. I'm not going to go through theories. I just very briefly, just to give the outline, but it takes years to establish good body of knowledge, to establish evidence on how things work. We got the, um, the global pandemic, and we say we need at least a year or two to, to, to be able to say, okay, with clinical trials and we, by evidence, this is the vaccine for the, for the virus. So in the same way, we need to have evidence on what is the antivirus that we need to give to society, structures, programs, minds, hearts, and, uh, and communities to transform them in creative communities. Um, Visually, this is how Olympus for Humanity and the, those, the cycle of Olympus for Humanity praxis model should be applied. But this is based on, on uh, the ancient Hellenic foundation, um, civilization. So the first principle of conflict resolution came with, before Alport, the contact theory of the, um, the oracle in Delphi, this is the model said, you know what, in order to resolve the challenges of humanity, you of war and disease and all the challenges, we need to bring people together, as you see on the right, um, that you need to bring people together, contact theory, so that through contact and these are the three wheels that you can see are the three main values that through contact you'll be able to, instead of killing each other, start regulating aggression, start competing with respect that gradually uh, you build relationships, you provide excellence in the sport arena and in other aspects of life and promote innovation across cities. So on the, the triangle, as you see, it was not just sport itself. It was a combination of athletic contests for um, wisdom, scientific minds, questioning mind, dialogue and arts, listening to your muses and let your, the muses and the creative aspect and the aesthetic aspect of self guide uh, your uh, growth, but at the same time channel uh, and manifest the aggression, the lower instincts of the humankind into creative solutions and uh, what is called also called as craftsmanship. So find my own um, gifts and talents and translate that into actions. So this is a theoretical model that I've been uh, trying to establish back in early 2000. There was no 
theory related with peace building and development. So everything I've been trying to do is based on humanistic psychology, social psychology, with an end goal on creating democratic, creative uh, citizens and communities. In a nutshell, how do we translate this theory in, in a program? So I've been designing and delivering programs since uh, 2005 in sport 2000, since, 2000, since 1991. Uh, the model I've been using, or, which is the reflection of sport for development theory and the reflection of Olympus for Humanity Praxis, entails Olympic education, which is synonymous with human development and global citizenship. So how we break it down in elements and topics, I think these are topics that what I, I'd like to call as VIPs that are universal and address every uh, human being on this planet. At, at least that's what I think. Um, in order to achieve that, then we need to start not just emphasizing the Olympic Games during the Olympic Games, but support all the efforts by IOC, organizing committees, national Olympic committees, academia. I truly believe that academia has significant responsibility and role to play in the advancement of Olympics in society. And uh, once I came to Japan, my first effort was not to go to the Olympic Games in Rio, but actually I started the day one, going to Sao Paulo, connecting with academia. This is Sanada Sensei with, a, with other colleagues, going to Sao Paulo and meeting other friends and engaging the academia and engaging students and trying to see how we create a global network, Olympus for Humanity Alliance and a network of professors and students that are committed into the Olympic idea, but not just for an idea, but actually be trained to become a champion of change of today of tomorrow, but today. So this is, this takes us back into Tsukuba. Uh, this is a picture from um, the University of Tsukuba. This is a field trip. Uh, our program is a master's program in Olympic studies and sport. And uh, part of our program, we try to integrate sport management with coaching, with Olympic and Paralympic education, with ethics, with anti-doping, with uh, with Japanese culture, but at the same time, go where the problem is. So not just talk the talk, but walk the talk. So this is uh, just one picture from um, our visit in Rix and Takada, uh, and where um, it was uh, the most um, devastating hit from tsunami. Uh, as we speak, 10 years after um, the disaster, there are uh, people that uh, still face uh, many problems. The Japanese people are very strong, very resilient. They don't talk about it, but uh, but I think it's very important. We have to learn from it. And uh, yes, it's very important to celebrate the Olympic idea, the Olympic Games. But I think part of our training is to expose all students, young, old, professors, policymakers, not just in cheerleading the Olympic La La Land, but actually becoming champions of change of the challenges that they face in the local communities. To achieve that, as I mentioned before, part of the problem after the 2020, I don't know how things will be here in Japan. What I've been trying to do with a number of colleagues, with uh, Sanada Sensei, the chairman of our program, and everybody we've been working with and talking with over the last four years, uh, with uh, Dr. Malik, uh, with uh, uh, Niraj, with uh, uh, with uh, Dev Shabazz University that we sign MOUs, with uh, uh, Paris 24, and uh, my colleague, uh, Dr. Arnaud Richard, that we uh, visited recently and we've been in interacting to move beyond into this one night stand of the big promises of the Olympic Games that there's no continuation after the day is over, after the show is gone. So for this um, vision, and we in close contact and discussion to see how we can create a long-term sustainable academic legacy. I truly believe that we need to go back into academia. We need to back to retrain uh, the future professors that engage with Olympic studies, not only about performance in sport, but actually about performance in, in human athlon. So resolving challenges and being able to be champions of change in their respective communities.
So the main idea is to create humanity restoration games. Uh, how to achieve that? It's a long discussion. Probably we need two, three, four days uh, to just discuss and analyze. But very briefly, I would like to give very basic assumptions that because perception and understanding defines the way we practice, whatever we practice. So going back into what the Olympic idea is, we have to first start that the most important thing is to conceptualize that the Olympic heritage and the Olympic idea or the Olympian idea is about urban design, about cities, how we construct, design cities and citizens that are creating a civilization that we need to remember. I thought we had 10 more minutes, but actually I'm done in two slides. So the one slide was that to conceptualize that this is part of a city and this is ancient Olympia. Go back to Jigoro Kano, this is from Tsukuba. So it's not just about Greece, but actually in the Hellenic civilization, there are people like Jigoro Kano, who was the president of our university for 23 years, uh, but also and go back into the teachings and, and to the heritage that was lost in time and translation. So in order to do that, uh, we need to start with a very basic question and I'll stop with this. How we move from content carriers into context changers? And this is the challenge uh, uh, that we are all called to not just talk about, but actually do something about it. And, uh, and I will pass it on to finding solutions to bridge the divide between the ideal and reality. So I would like to stop here and uh, open the and invite our uh, students. Welcome you all. So these all are the see the uh, smile on Alexis face. It is good to see your students because they are the reflections of yours. And teaching is a worldwide tree. So here they have gone from India to your country to bring the lessons how to spread humanity, how to promote Olympism, how to promote Olympic education, how they can be the career of peace building, as well as how the sustainable development through these active resource person can bring into the existence. Sharing, uh, sharing their insights, so sharing their insights about their experience in Japan and how this is relevant in the Indian context. Aman, did you have a presentation or just share? No, 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 we were just going to have a chat. No, that's what I was. Sorry. Yes. Please start. It's uh, great uh, to have this platform to have this conversation. Uh, and it's always good to see uh, Dr. Alexis. Uh, we've uh, spent quite a lot of time together. And uh, I think he mentioned uh, Dr. Guido Geisler, a former uh, professor of mine who, who's also been very instrumental. Um, I think from my perspective, it was uh, it was a great experience to be part of the, the, the Sports for Tomorrow uh, legacy program. I think it's, it's very important when we talk about uh, concepts like human capital and uh, the legacy of, of Olympics and the Olympic Games and the philosophy of Olympicism to really understand uh, what it actually means. And I think uh, it's something that I did not maybe have that, that much of an awareness of before uh, I went to, to Japan. So I was fortunate enough that I got the opportunity uh, to go to the University of Scuba in, in 2016 and, uh, and, and study the master's program in Olympic studies. Um, and I think uh, now after coming back, I'm still very, very invested and in working uh, with my, the organization that I'm currently involved with, which is the Inspire Institute of Sport to you know, help actually build up the, the Olympic movement uh, in India, help work with uh, you know, elite athletes as well as junior athletes to really help them uh, you know, understand what exactly the Olympic movement is all about. And one of the things that I think in India we lack an understanding of is that for us, uh, the Olympics is just something that happens once every four years. But I think uh, it's, it's something that, uh, that uh, India's only Olympic gold medalist, uh, Vinay Bindra has said very well, is that it's not every four years, it's every day. And I think that's the spirit of the, of the Olympic movement and of Olympism that uh, I think is important for us to really uh, look at uh, inculcating in the Indian uh, body of knowledge. And I think through organizations and platforms like this, uh, we have a great opportunity. Our Honorable Sports Minister has set a very uh, you know, ambitious target of saying that India should be in the top 10 uh, countries on the Olympic medals table by 2028 in LA. I think it's a brilliant opportunity for us to you know, capitalize on that. And we should be in the top 10, not only in the medals, but also in, in initiating conversations about 
uh, uh, concepts like the Olympic movement and really building up uh, humanity through uh, the power of sport. Uh, good evening to everyone and uh, it's a pleasure to attend this um, conference. And actually I joined the program in 2018 and I finished the graduation in March 2020. And actually it was a good experience as uh, Mr. Amman said, Dr. Guido Gessler was my supervisor. And actually before that I was not much aware about the Olympism and Olympic values, Olympic education program. But after this program, I came to know about the purpose and process of Olympism and Olympic values and importance of the Olympic value education program. Right now, I'm working in the Sports Authority of India as Deputy Director. So up with this knowledge, I think I can contribute for the development and implementation of the Olympic education program, as well as in my capacity, uh, whatever I can do. Yeah, thank you. So I have to apologize because I think part of the delay was my incompetence with technology and the software. I'd like to say a big thank you. And this is not just the end this of this discussion. This is only the beginning of uh, it's wonderful to see you. Uh, thank you, thank you, Alexis.